tonight, we're going to Ephesians. I'm going to teach what I perhaps believe to be. If I had to pick 10 verses of scripture out of God's word as the most meaningful to me, and words of God's word that I have read a thousand times, these are the 10 verses. So what can a man say about the word of God when it's so fantastically fantastic as the second chapter of Ephesians beginning with verse 4? There is no man living that can put into words the greatness of these verses. These are an experience in life which are absolutely par excellence. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 word one says but and you and I know that this sets in contrast with that which precedes and in the preceding three verses which we covered in our last session you know why there has to be a but here because we were by nature children of wrath but 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 something happened to us and that something is the most magnificent, the greatest thing in the whole world. There's nothing to compare with in any other place. And of course, that is the new birth of Christ in us, the hope of glory. But God, who is rich, being rich in mercy, for is on account of his love, no, is what? Great love. Some way or other, he didn't quite feel to say love of God or God's love big enough. So he had them add the word great. I don't know what it means, just great. Which must be love that is super boundingly and super boundingly and super boundingly a love. <laughs> great love. Wherewith he loved us and you know it had to be great because we were dead in trespass of sins without god without old enmity against god everything naturally children of the adversary so the great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins the word sins here is the same word as the word trespasses of verse one even when we were dead in trespasses, path is omitted, quickened us together, made us alive with Christ. By grace, ye are, were saved. Verse 6. And hath raised us up together, awakened us together, and made us sit down together. You know, to sit down is not only in the essence of something being completely complete, but it carries with it the authority of the privilege of sitting. I think the word cathedra, transliterated over into the English word cathedral. Cathedral historically was the seat of the bishop. Nobody had a cathedral built until there was a bishop there. Then they built the cathedral because it had the seat of the bishop in it. That's where he sat, which means he's arrived as a bishop, but he has the authority to go with it. He not only raised us up. I tried to find the scriptures, references, and the books this afternoon to give this. All you need to do is take a look at a Greek text and this Raised up is not the word that's used for raised. The word for raised is anahistomai. This is an entirely different thing. It means awakened. We were dead. Now we got what? Awakened. And 
Boy, when you really work this thing, it just becomes so exciting. See, we were dead, but with Christ, we were awakened with him. And usually you have to wake up before you stand up. That's why the gathering together in, the, in that raising uses the word stand up. Because with the coming, with the return of Christ, the dead shall be raised. And that means stand up. So we are already in verse 6, raised up together, awakened together with him now, but stand up with his return. It's that accurate. Well, in your natural life, you wake up first before you stand up usually. Made us sit together in the heavenlies by Christ Jesus. Verse 7, that in order that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Now, that's not just riches, but what? Exceeding. Exceeding riches of his grace. In what period? Ages to come. And there are three great riches in Ephesians that you've got to look for. The riches of his grace, which deals with whenever the redemption of man is in view. The riches of his glory that deals whenever man's inheritance who has been redeemed, whose inheritance is in view. And the third one is this one, the exceeding riches of his grace when the ages of the future are in view. Those are the three things that are used in Ephesians. <laughs> You'll find the same truth in Colossians. That beautiful? Show the exceeding riches. Ages to come. He shows the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. Kindness literally means useful service. Toward. Real significant. Down to us. See, exceeding riches of his grace in his useful service, down, down. God raised him, he's seated. He's coming back. But now on the day of Pentecost, he shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Down. That's toward. Riches of his grace in his useful service down, useful service down, that we could be born again, speak in tongues, operate manifestations, walk with the power of God, down to us by the second through, toward us through, this through here is by Christ Jesus. Verse 8. For by grace, are ye saved through? And the word through here means all the way. It's the word dia. Where mathematically a line divides a surface into two by the intersecting of that whole thing. Saved through all the way. You see, if it was anything less than eternal life, you would never be saved how? That's why it uses that word. Saved all the way. And that not, absolutely not, of, out from, yourself. It is the gift from God. 
Boy, that's fantastic. And that absolutely not out from yourselves. You see, we're not saved by faith. We are saved by what? Grace, not faith. Saved by what? Not faith. As we believe and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and God raised him from the dead, we believe that, then God does what? Saves us. By his mercy and by his grace and gives us the faith of what? Jesus Christ. Verse 9. Not of works, absolutely not of what works, lest in order that no man should boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship. This word is used as handiwork, God's handiwork when he talks about the creation of the heavens and so forth. Created, having been created in Christ Jesus, unto is for the purpose of good works. See, we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace. Yet our salvation is unto or for the purpose of doing what? Not works to be saved, but because we are saved, we do. Right, and those are the works that the word requires. I would ye all spake in what? That's works. And others. Which God hath before ordained literally reads, hath before ordained, literally reads, afore prepared. That in order that we should walk in them. Those, I think, are perhaps the greatest words that could thrill the heart of any man or woman who wants to know God and knows God and loves God and wants it capsulized in what God really did. Now I'm going to give you a literal translation according to usage. And I want you just to sit back and relax yourself because you can't take it all in shorthand. And I want to give you the The beauty, I want you to feel these verses like I feel them in the innermost depth of my soul. And just let the greatness of that thing effervesce within you. But God, being rich in mercy, on account of his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, were made alive with Christ. By grace were we saved. And were awakened together with him and made us to sit down together in the heavenlies by Christ Jesus. In order that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his useful service down to us by Christ Jesus. For by grace were you saved all the way by means of the faith of Jesus Christ, and that absolutely not of yourselves, but the gift out from God. For we are his handiwork, having been created by God in Christ Jesus for the purpose of good works, which God prepared aforetime in order that we might walk in them. 
Those are those verses from the second chapter of Ephesians. I think I've read that passage a thousand times, maybe more, just from King James, because I understand it from King James. It blesses my soul. And what a tremendous privilege it is to know Christ and to be known of him and to see the impact of the greatness of those truths. I just don't know where there are any other six verses that say that much and tell you that much and make you feel like a wonderful person because you know God and God knows you. And what a great day it was when I learned it was not of works. And then when I found out, he said it was absolutely not of works. <laughs> Even that augmented the truth for me. But that we were appointed unto good works because of what we are in Christ. And certainly if God so loved that he gave, the least you and I can do is give. God so loved that he gave his only begotten son and we're born again, we're in him, we're raised with him, we're seated, all these other things woke us up, all the rest of it. Certainly the least we can do is just take a stand for God and his word. And again, just say, thus saith the Lord. It's the word, the word, the greatness of God and his word that has lived in the hearts and lives of our people. And all of this here in Ephesians tonight, you can build the foundation of it back in Romans chapter 6. As I told you, the foundation's laid there. And once you build it in Romans, you see, then this Ephesians is just like the building on the foundation. The foundation of all truth of the church of the mystery to which you and I belong. The foundation is all laid in Romans. Ephesians just puts the beautiful mansion on top of it. And nothing could be stated more beautifully. You could just write pages and pages and pages of stuff on these few verses that I've gone through. I know one section in here. I must have checked 40 different verses in the word. All of those build up and relate themselves to that one little phrase in the eighth verse. But when you get all those scriptures all put together, they still say no more than that one little verse says, if you just literally believe it. Now you can augment it with all the other scriptures but you will not improve the truth of Ephesians 2. There it sits like a diamond. All we need to do is polish our minds with the greatness of that word and let that word just dwell in us richly. Well, Father, I stand in utter amazement again tonight at the greatness of your word and yet the great simplicity of it the amazing beauty of it. And I'm truly thankful, Father. Thankful beyond words for the love wherewith you loved us and the grace wherewith you graced our lives and the mercy with which you keep tenderizing the innermost part of our whole beings, Father. Surely thank you for the privilege of life and health and strength and for living and sharing the greatness of your word with our people. Thank you for making this word so living and so real to every person in the core. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>